day, thousands of people in Kingston travel. Some by car, some by cycle, some walk, but most travel by bus. Over the last 20 years, Kingston has grown into a city of 600,000 people, and the city's bus service has grown with it. Huge housing estates have sprung up all over the city. This growth couldn't have taken place without an expanding public transport system. New industries have come into being. More and more children attend school. To cater for this growth, Jamaica Omnibus Services Limited, known locally as JOS, came into being in 1953. At the beginning, JOS had 68 buses and 350 workers. By the 70s, with 2,400 workers, the company's 425 buses operated over 12 million miles per year and carried 150 million passengers. Running a large bus company requires organization. The board of directors is partly British and partly Jamaican. This board, which meets regularly, is responsible to the shareholders, of whom more than 1,000 are Jamaicans. The managing director who works full-time has under him three main departments. Engineering, which maintains the fleet, traffic, which operates it, and accounts, which, as its name implies, accounts for the revenue taken. The engineering department, under the chief engineer, deals with the day-to-day -day and long-term maintenance of the fleet. The first JOS buses operated out of a depot in Western Kingston known as Tivoli Depot. Tivoli Depot has now been expanded to a 10-acre site on which are located offices, overhaul workshops, running shift workshops, a preventative maintenance section, stores, and the engineering and driver training schools. By 1968, the fleet had outgrown this single depot and a second one was opened at Lindhurst Road early in 1969. Here, there are similar facilities for day-to-day -day body and mechanical repairs and cleaning, but major work is still done at Tivoli. Road conditions in Kingston and the steep gradient of the St. Andrew foothills take a heavy toll and providing the buses to keep Kingston on the move requires the skills of many people. Fuelers, cleaners, checkers, welders, mechanics, electricians, sheet metal workers, Firemen, painters, testers, and so on. At both depots, there's a system of regular inspection, cleaning, and servicing. The buses are fueled, oiled, vacuumed internally, and washed by a mechanical washer. They're then made ready for the next scheduled run. Any defects are reported, such as the need for a tire change, and dealt with before the bus next goes on service. empty and minor repairs are dealt with between the morning and evening peaks. A big problem is accident damage. In a case like this, there's serious damage to the superstructure. Careful inspection will reveal the best way to tackle it.
Accidents apart, buses come in for docking at regular intervals. Components are removed. Steam cleaned. and then taken for reconditioning. After all the mechanical parts have been renewed, brakes were lined, electrical systems checked, the interior repaired and seats replaced, the bus has a fresh coat of paint, is road tested and once more takes its place on the city streets. The traffic department calls on the engineering department to provide the required maximum number of buses for service each day. The traffic manager, assisted by two area superintendents, plans timetables and crew schedules and supervises the company's operations around the city. From as early as four in the morning, drivers and conductors report for duty. Special staff buses bring in early crews and take home the late shift after midnight. When starting out, duty drivers collect their buses from the depots and at the main city terminals, they're joined by their conductors. Bus timetables require careful planning. This is done in the schedule section, which also prepares duty schedules and rotors for drivers and conductors. It's a complicated exercise to make crews available at the times required. The best of planning can be confounded by absenteeism, lateness, sickness, and so on. It's therefore necessary for the detailing section to issue special daily orders to cover such eventualities, and standby crews are programmed to provide for unforeseen staff failures and holiday periods. A team of inspectors maintains a constant check on route operations. Some work at important traffic points, others travel on the buses, and a number cover the city in patrol cars fitted with two-way radios. The four operational centers, Tivoli, Lyndhurst, and the Slipe Road and King Street offices, are linked in this radio system, ensuring smooth operation through advanced communication. The company runs training schools for both drivers and conductors. And here we see trainee conductresses in the school. No new recruit is passed out until she's fully proficient. Bus crews have daily contact with the general public, and great emphasis is placed on the need for good public relations and common courtesy. A new driver has similar classroom training, though much of his or her training period yes, we do have lady drivers, is carried out on the road. After training, the potential bus driver is examined by a government inspector to obtain his PPV driver's license. However, this isn't handed over until the new drivers have satisfied the school's instructors that they're fully capable of handling this demanding job. JRS drivers pride themselves on their safety record. This driver is receiving his award for 14 years accident-free driving. With 150 million passengers a year, some complaints are inevitable. Each complaint is investigated and a reply sent to the complainant. If a company employee is proven to be at fault, the traffic staff superintendent takes the necessary action. Bus services can't be provided free, and this is why the conductor says the familiar fares please. 
cash which has been collected must be accounted for. The accounts department, under the company secretary, compiles statistics of revenue and mileage for management purposes and the necessary books of account. It also deals with the company's large computerized payroll. In the ticket offices, the numbered tickets are checked and issued in pans to the conductors. Each conductor is responsible for the total value of tickets sold when, at the end of a duty, he pays in his takings and returns his unsold tickets to the ticket office. With over 2,400 employees, staff welfare and personal problems must occur. These are dealt with by the personnel manager. His department keeps records on each employee. Apart from attending to the many day-to-day -day problems, the personnel manager hears appeals from members of the staff dissatisfied with disciplinary action. He also assists the managing director in the frequent negotiations with the two unions which represent workers, the BITU and the NWU. In addition to normal collective bargaining, there are also regular consultative committee meetings between management and workers to discuss common problems. In this modern world, public relations play an increasing part, and the advertising manager is responsible for this function. Also, most buses throughout the world today have become mobile billboards, and at JOS, the advertising manager sells these spaces to advertisers. He also supervises the company's printing department, which produces several million copies of over 340 different forms. We've seen how the day-to-day -day running of the company is dealt with, but what of the future? Management holds regular meetings to consider future policy. New routes are planned, and new buses are ordered. And before a new one like this goes on the roads, its specifications have to be planned, and orders are only placed after close liaison with the company's technical advisors in the manufacturing country. Running a bus service in a congested city is no easy matter, and the company maintains close cooperation with the Board of Control set up by the government, which is responsible for ensuring that JOS is able to do its job properly. It is this body which decides the level of fares which are charged. However, in the end, it's the workers of the JOS who finally determine the standard of service. And most important of all are the drivers, conductors, and inspectors on the road in daily contact with the public. Of vital importance to any public transport undertaking is timekeeping. Every employee of JOS knows that punctuality is essential. We've seen many departments with many people at work. The responsibility for providing the people of Kingston with a good transport service rests on every employee's shoulder. The bus system is the lifeblood of the city. All sections of the community rely on it to varying degrees. Factory workers, office workers, school children, shoppers, people seeking leisure. All these people need to reach their destination and they rely on JOS to do its job of keeping Kingston on the move.